Well, hello. In this video, we're going to talk about what is GDNT and why is it needed. And this is actually from Unit 1 of my Fundamentals program that I've linked in the description below. Well, let's start with the acronym that everybody knows, G, D, and T. So what does it stand for? Geometric Dimensioning and Tolerancing. And people think of it as one thing, G, D, and T, but actually I want to separate that into the D from the T. D is dimensioning and T is tolerancing. So let's start with dimensioning. All right, so I've defined the perfect geometry of this product. How high do you want this ledge? 1.2 inches. What angle do you want? 45 degrees. What's your radius? 750. Diameter? 750. We locate the hole in the x direction, 600. In the y direction, 500. Now, if I only gave these dimensions, would you be able to make this part? I guess my question is, do you need tolerances to make parts? And I would say no. There's a lot of no tolerance manufacturing methods out there. We've been making parts for hundreds, even thousands of years without putting tolerance on the drawings. If you're Orange County Choppers or Gas Monkey Garage, you don't put tolerance on your drawings. You probably just have some dimensions. And you fit it up to your assembly. If it doesn't work, well, then you shave it down. You customize it till it does work. So there's all these artisan craftsman style, file to fit, cut to match, hammer in place that have worked for a long time. So what do we need the tolerancing then for? We need it for two reasons, interchangeability and quality control. If you want this to be interchangeable with all those other parts out there, now you need to access some limits for how big and small these dimensions can be for these parts to fit up in the mating assembly. Also, we need it for quality control. In order to say this is an accepted part or rejected part, you need to have some rigid criteria to say how much it could be out. Now, this is the old style of tolerancing. It's called plus minus tolerancing. It was invented in the mid 1800s, and we found a lot of problems with plus and minus tolerancing. So, in the last 100 years or so, we've been switching over to geometric tolerancing. So, geometric tolerancing is applying tolerances to all the features. Every hole, every slot, every surface will get a tolerance instead of all the dimensions. So, plus and minus is a dimension based tolerancing system. Every dimension gets a tolerance. And geometric tolerancing is a feature-based tolerancing system. Every hole, every slot, every surface gets a tolerance. And what I found from being in industry for a while here, I found that companies are a bit of a mixture. They use some plus or minus on their dimensions, and then they use some geometric tolerancing on the features. But what we're going to try to push for is more geometric tolerancing, better control on our parts. We found a lot of problems with plus or minus tolerancing. It's just too simplistic. When you think of the three-dimensional variations you could actually have on the part, it actually is quite complicated. Let's take our example here with that hole bar, and you know these dimensions are one-dimensional. Plus or minus 10, plus or minus 1 degree, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 5. And what is these controlling exactly? Are they controlling the front of the hole, the back of the hole? What happens when the surfaces are skewed to each other? How do you define the distance between skewed surfaces? Parallelogram effects that can happen. Plus or minus is too simplistic. It's very one-dimensional. Plus or minus is really good for temperature. I would like it to be 70 degrees in this room, plus or minus 1 degree. I would like to have this much resistance on my resistor, plus or minus. It's very one-dimensional. When you have a three-dimensional part, the 1D tolerancing system isn't going to work very well. So quite simply, geometric tolerancing is a three-dimensional tolerancing system. You create a datum reference frame. You look at how it mounts. You're going to select an A, a B, and a C datum feature. That creates a coordinate system that you relate all of your features to that coordinate system. We use our two big symbols, profile, to that datum reference frame, and position to that datum reference frame to control the form, orientation, location of features on your part. So every hole, every slot, every surface will get controlled relative to a datum reference frame. And we create these three-dimensional geometrically shaped tolerance zones. I think that's where geometric tolerancing gets its name, is you create geometric shaped tolerance zones in which your features have to lie within. You get much more robust control on your parts this way. So in this new system, G, D, and T, which really I think is a bad name, I think it's more G, T, and D, because dimensioning is separate from the tolerancing. It's geometric tolerances and basic dimensions. So I'm trying to get it to be changed to G, T, and D, but it's not really standardized at all, so I might need this group here to help me. If somebody says, oh, you watching some videos on GD and T? I'd be like, no, I'm watching some videos on GT and D, because the D is going away, actually. It's all about geometric tolerances. Love to hear your comments on that, what you think of GT and D, if you think it'll ever catch on. So here we've got basic dimensions that define what the perfect geometry of the part is supposed to look like. That's great. And now we apply profile and position to control the variations on those features. I think that handles it much better. So quite simply, G, T, and D is a symbolic language that engineers can describe their worst part variations. 
they apply these symbols that can be read by humans or be read by computers to mathematically describe what the worst case variations could be. The great thing about feature-based tolerancing and those mathematical descriptions is they are machine readable. A lot of companies are moving towards model-based definition where we can apply tolerances to 3D models. Now when you have 3D models, you don't have dimensions anymore. So all of a sudden you lose your dimension, you lose your tolerance if you had a plus minus system. So with geometric tolerancing, we apply the tolerances to each feature. And they're all digitally associated. So when I click this profile tolerance here, it should associate to that surface and the machine knows exactly what tolerance is applied there. When you click this position tolerance, it should automatically highlight the two features it applies to. So model-based definition, MBD, is only possible with a system that's feature-based. So I want to talk about the three different tolerances that I've seen in industry. Number one is just dimensions, but no tolerance. This is going to be your custom hot rod manufacturer. Everything's made by a single source supplier, and you can make everything custom built in-house. This is actually what I use in my backyard. I built a shed the other day. I didn't use any tolerances. I had some dimensions that I shot for, but a lot of it had to be measure and then match or match drilled in place. And don't expect the panel on my shed to fit with the neighbor's shed over there because nothing's interchangeable. And that's okay. Sometimes you don't need interchangeability on anything, and that's why you don't need tolerances. But I'd say a lot of companies are in this specified tolerance of method. And they're going to use plus or minus if you're a non-precise industry. I have a friend that works in the nuclear industry. It does nuclear piping for power plants. And he said, yeah, the tolerances are so large, plus or minus 30 thou and everything. We don't really care. So we just use the plus or minus system. And yeah, that probably works real well. Also, it works if you're vertically integrated. If everybody knows this part and you have a single source supplier, then maybe we can get away with plus or minus tolerancing because everybody knows the part. There's that tribal knowledge that's ingrained in the way we've been making this for years, and we understand what those plus or minus tolerances mean. But I think a lot of the industry is moving towards geometric tolerances more recently. This is used more in industries with both precise and complicated geometry. And I think that's the two keys for using geometric tolerancing. You need precision parts with tight tolerances, and you need complicated geometry. You might have a shaft that has a tight size tolerance, but you don't really need it related to anything else. Plus or minus is good for that. You might have real complex geometry, like a plastic lawn chair or something in your backyard has complex geometry, but there's no precision needed there. So the combination of precision and complicated geometry is where geometric tolerancing really excels. So parts like this that have a lot of complicated holes and surfaces that have to be related to each other. We have more complex aerospace turbine blades. You know, you're not going to get away with a plus or minus system on something like that. You need to control your part with profile and set up a datum reference frame that everybody agrees on. And if you want to source this out to different suppliers and you say, hey, this part's going to go into my precision medical device, you know, is this going to work every time? You need to have confidence in the data that you're collecting from inspection. So geometric tolerancing is fully standardized to ASME, Y14.5, and also the ISO GPS. That's not something that plus or minus tolerancing could ever have. Plus or minus is a bit of a free-for-all. What do you think it means? And plus or minus, it puts too much pressure on our poor inspectors. Inspection is supposed to be the gatekeeper between the good and bad parts. And when you give them some fuzzy requirements of say, oh yeah, make sure it does this, but you don't really say the details, it really puts a lot of pressure on them when they don't know the function, they don't know how it fits. So geometric tolerancing helps the design engineer communicate with their inspectors, with their manufacturers, their suppliers to say what's important, what's not important, how does it fit, how does it mount, this matters, this doesn't. So gd &T is that symbolic language that we can all communicate with each other and much better than that old system of plus minus. Like I said in the beginning, this was just an introduction of what gd &T is like, but if you'd like to take your knowledge to the next level and really learn the subject, please take our online video program linked in the description below.